let's use these props to sort of go through this again. I mean, you were so eloquent in sharing with, with what, what you went through. I mean, you had a primary breast augmentation, and then years later you decided you wanted to go bigger, right? Correct. So you, you decided to go bigger, and during the course, after the second surgery, you, de you developed some problems around the nipple with healing and scarring and an open wound. And the problem is that when you have an implant inside the body and then it's seeded with bacteria, which happened here, that you developed a MRSA infection. Now, where that came from, we'll never know. I know that after your primary augmentation, you were having revisions done in the office. Maybe it would have been smarter to do that in the operating room setting, but in any case, this infection and attempting to fix it in the office started a series of events that that infection couldn't be controlled. You ended up losing the implant, leaving the implant out, and then attempting to reconstruct it with a tissue expander like we do for mastectomy patients. That didn't work out. That was removed. So then, you know, what happened? What was the end result? Well. The thing to do was to remove the implant completely and, and now left you with this scenario where you have the, the breast implant in place on the right and the left is, is just your own tissue. So that's what happened. And in this case where you have an implant that has stretched out the skin and then you develop an infection, typically you're going to get these a lot of contraction and deformity and, and shrinkage and wrinkling of the breast, and, and that's the situation that you're in now. Is it very uncommon for someone to get an MRSA infection after a breast augmentation procedure? Well, as, as you know, any operative procedure, whether you use an implant or not, there's always a risk of infection. And MRSA is out there, whether it be the setting that you're doing it, uh, the provider is a MRSA carrier, you may be a MRSA carrier, you don't know. but. Case like this, whenever you're dealing with an implant in the body, you have to use the strictest sterile techniques, overkill. And you mentioned every complication that could happen happened, and, and we can't change that, but what would it do for your life if you could get it fixed? If I could get my body fixed, I could feel like myself again. I could feel beautiful. I could feel confident. I could hold my head high. I could wear normal clothes and I just want to be whole. I want to be normal. I want to look beautiful. I want to feel beautiful. I want to be able to be intimate with my husband again and feel comfortable and confident instead of trying to hide my body. And I want to say, you, well, you are beautiful. I want you to Thank feel you. beautiful, but I just want to let you know you are beautiful. Thank you. And I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce everyone to Los Angeles plastic surgeon, Dr. Saul Lahijani, who might have a solution here. Take it away, Doc. Hi, Andrea. Hi, Dr. Sal. Do We've been following your story very closely in our office. And my colleague, Dr. Michael Zarabi, and I would love to perform full breast reconstructive surgery, waving all surgeons' feet. Congratulations. Well, you deserve it. Thank you, Dr. Sal. You deserve it. Thank you, Doctor. So our hope is that you can come back on this stage and replace those tears with a smile. Absolutely. And I, and, I, and I have faith. And I have one question. So once you're healed and all of this is done, what's one of the first things that you're going to do just to celebrate? Put my bikini on and there take you my go. to the lake again. Well, Dr. Lajani, to you and Dr. Zarabi, thank you so much for offering your services. We're, we're so very excited yes. for you and your future, Andrea. Thank you for thank sharing. You. Thank and you, Dr. Future... Self. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> thank you, guys. You're very welcome.